have you ever wondered why some of the most terrifying and enormous creatures on Earth live where no light can reach? Why the ocean as darkest corners are home to monsters that defy imagination, squid the size of school buses, sharks older than empires, and bugs as big as your face? If you've ever felt like the world above is too noisy, too predictable, or just too much, then maybe, just maybe, the deep sea is your kind of place. Because in the pitch black stillness, beneath 11,000 meters of crushing pressure, life takes on a form both alien and astonishing. Today, we're diving into the abyss to unravel one of nature's strangest mysteries. Why do deep sea creatures become giants? Is it evolution's mistake or its masterpiece? Let me tell you a story. A story that begins not with a bang, but with a gentle snow. Not of ice, but of the falling remains of life above. And in that reign of decay, something miraculous begins. If you've ever found beauty in the eerie, or comfort in the strange. If you've ever felt like the real aliens might not be in space, but beneath us, swimming slow, unseen, and eternal, then stay with me. This one's for you. If you feel that pull too, leave a comment saying, I'm still in awe. Drop a like to support this strange little corner of YouTube, and let's descend together. Picture this. You're floating at the ocean's surface, sun warm on your back, waves gently rising and falling. But just beneath, a hidden world begins. As you dive deeper, light begins to fade. You pass through the epipelagic zone, where life thrives thanks to the sun. It's bright, colorful, familiar, but keep going. Soon, you reach the twilight zone, the mesopelagic. Light becomes faint, ghost-like. There's no photosynthesis here, just shadows and silence. Deeper still, and the ocean turns pitch black. This is the midnight zone, the bath epelagic. It's cold. Still, the pressure, intense. And yet, life pulses. Bioluminescent creatures flicker like stars. Jellyfish, squids, anglerfish. They don't reflect light, they make it. Glowing beacons in a black sea. But the ocean doesn't stop. It drops into the abyss, and then the Hadal zone. Trenches deeper than Everest is tall. Here, there's no sunlight, no heat, and the pressure could crush a submarine. And yet, life still exists. Giant life. Unthinkable shapes and sizes, squid as long as buses, crabs with 12-foot legs, sharks that live for 500 years. Why? Why do creatures get so big in a place so empty? That's the mystery we're about to explore. Not just what's down there, but why it's so monstrous. If you've ever felt the pull of the unknown, the beauty of darkness, then welcome aboard. We're going deep. As you sink into the twilight zone, creatures begin to stretch the limits of imagination and size. Here, in the dim blue gloom, giants drift. The giant Japanese spider crab with legs that span 12 feet. The big red jellyfish, glowing like a ghostly parachute. And the oarfish, a silver ribbon over 10 meters long, swimming upright like a deep sea flag. But the most famous of all, the giant squid. For centuries, it was a myth. A kraken said to pull ships into the abyss, until 2004, when it was photographed alive for the first time. Not in some mythical trench, but right here, at 1,000 meters deep. It's not the only one. The colossal squid lives even deeper, weighing up to 700 kilograms. Its eyes are the largest of any animal on Earth. Not for hunting, but for spotting predators. So, why are these creatures so big? Part of the answer lies in survival. Down here, food is scarce and predators are few. Grow large enough and you're harder to eat. Grow large enough and you can go longer between meals. It's not just biology, it's strategy. And it works. The giants of the Twilight Zone aren't accidents. They're masterpieces of evolution, adapted perfectly to a world most of us will never see. And the deeper we go, the bigger it gets. In the deep sea, every meal is a miracle. Above, sunlight feeds plankton. Plankton feeds fish, fish feed everything else. But down here, there's no light, no plants, no easy meals. So what's left? Marine snow, a slow, constant drizzle of dead plankton, fish scales, fecal matter, falling from the surface like ash. It's barely food, but it's everything. Some creatures catch it directly. 
like the vampire squid, drifting at 900 meters using long filaments to trap particles. Others eat the ones who catch it, but the food chain is short. Resources, scarce. So animals get creative. They evolve to move less and need less. The deep is filled with ambush predators, creatures that wait in silence for prey to drift by. Chasing wastes energy, waiting is smart. And when food does appear, say a carcass falls from above, creatures gorge, like the giant isopod, which eats so much it can't move, then fasts for months, even years. Here, efficiency is survival. The slower your metabolism, the longer you last. And the bigger your body, the more you can store. In this world, every adaptation has one goal, do more with less. It's not a place of chaos. It's a place of patience. And it's working. At first, squid were prey. Small, soft-bodied, perfect targets in a sea full of predators. But in the deep, something changed. The giant squid emerged. Growing up to 13 meters long, it became one of the ocean's true enigmas. Eyes the size of dinner plates, tentacles lined with hooks. Not myth, fact. Even more impressive is the colossal squid. Shorter, but heavier. Weighing up to 700 kilograms, with arms tipped in rotating hooks, it lurks at depths over 2,000 meters. You'd expect a creature that size to be aggressive, fast. A deep sea apex predator. But it's the opposite. The colossal squid is slow, deliberate. It barely moves, because it doesn't need to. Thanks to Kleiber's law, its metabolism is incredibly low. Some estimates suggest it burns only 45 calories a day. That's less than a slice of bread. One fish can feed it for months. So instead of chasing, it waits, lurking in the dark, letting food come to it. Its massive eyes, not for hunting, but for spotting predators like sperm whales. Even giants have enemies. What started as a defense, growing bigger to avoid being eaten, became a strength. Now they are the hunters. And their secret weapon isn't violence, it's patience. The deep didn't just make monsters it made survivors. Why do deep sea creatures grow so big? Part of the answer lies in physics. There's a rule in biology called Kleber's law. It says that as animals get bigger, their metabolism doesn't increase equally. A creature 10 times heavier doesn't need 10 times the energy. Instead, metabolism scales with body mass to the three and four power. That means the bigger you are, the more efficient your body becomes. In the deep, that's a superpower. Take the colossal squid, 500 kilos, yet needing only 45 calories a day. That's because it loses less heat, uses less energy to move, and can survive long periods without eating. But physics plays another role too, surface area versus volume. As creatures get bigger, their volume grows faster than their surface area. That means they lose heat slower. Ideal in the near freezing deep, cold water also holds more oxygen, so being big might help animals get the most from every breath. It's like upgrading your fuel tank while using less fuel. Even water itself behaves differently at depth. It's denser, more viscous. A larger body might help creatures move better through this thick, heavy medium. So while it may seem bizarre, gigantism in the deep isn't strange at all. It's math, it's survival, it's physics, playing out in slow motion, and the result? Creatures that are not just bigger, but brilliantly built for their world. In the icy waters of the Arctic, another deep sea giant roams, slow, silent, and ancient. Meet the Greenland shark. It can grow up to seven meters long and weigh over 1,400 kilograms. But its size isn't the most shocking part. It's how long it lives. These sharks don't even reach reproductive age until they're about 150 years old. Some individuals are estimated to be over 500 years old. Let that sink in. There are sharks alive today that were born before the U.S. existed, before Beethoven was born, while the Aztec Empire still stood. How do they live so long? Just like the colossal squid, a slow metabolism. Cold water slows their biology to a crawl. They grow just a centimeter or two each year. They move slowly. They eat slowly. They're opportunistic scavengers, feeding on fish, squid, and even large carrion. Scientists have found polar bear and horse remains in their stomachs. And there's a dark twist. Most Greenland sharks are blind. Why? A tiny crustacean latches onto their eyeballs, feeding on them, leaving them damaged or completely sightless. Yet they survive, even thrive. 
They are a lesson in endurance, not fast, not flashy, but enduring. In a world obsessed with speed, the Greenland shark is a quiet reminder. Sometimes the longest lives are lived slowly. Go deeper, past the abyss, into the Hadal zone, the deepest part of the ocean. It begins at 6,000 meters, where trenches plunge like scars into the seafloor. No light, temperatures near freezing, pressure over 1,000 times that of the surface. It seems impossible for life to exist here, but not only does it exist, it thrives. And once again, it's giant. Meet Alicella gigantea, the supergiant amphipod. Most amphipods are tiny, barely two centimeter long, but this one, it can reach 34 centimeters, the size of a guinea pig. They look like massive underwater insects crawling across the trench floor. Their cousins, the giant isopods, grow even larger, up to 50 centimeter. Compared to the six millimeter wood lice in your garden, it's staggering. Why so big? Because in the deep, every meal is uncertain. Being large helps store energy, move farther, and survive longer between meals. And when food appears, like a whale carcass or a chunk of debris, these scavengers feast. They eat until they can barely move, then wait weeks or even months for the next opportunity. But their size may offer another advantage. In cold, viscous water, a bigger body moves more efficiently. And with oxygen more available in cold depths, larger sizes are more sustainable. These aren't monsters. They're perfectly tuned machines, designed for survival where life should be impossible. The deeper we go, the more nature surprises us, and the giants just keep coming. In the crushing dark of the Hadal trenches, where food is almost non-existent, survival demands creativity. And one creature cracked the code. The Hirondelea gigas, a type of deep sea amphipod, lives at depths over 10,000 meters. What makes it extraordinary isn't just its size, it's what it eats. You'd expect these scavengers to live off marine snow, dead plankton, fish remains. But here in Dalia has something no other amphipod does, an enzyme that breaks down wood. Yes, wood. Scientists discovered this creature produces a powerful cellulase enzyme, one that turns sawdust and pulp into sugar, pure energy. Even more incredible, it works better under extreme pressure. Why does this matter? Because every once in a while, large logs or driftwood sink from storms above. If you're a creature living 11,000 meters down, that's like manna from heaven. And here in Dalia doesn't waste a single splinter. In a world where most animals barely survive on microscopic crumbs, this amphipod feasts on what no one else can digest. It's not just scavenging, it's innovation. Evolution gave it the tools to digest the impossible and thrive where others starve. It's a reminder, life finds a way. Even in the darkest, most pressured corners of earth, something always adapts. For millions of years, the deep sea has existed in balance, dark, slow, and stable. But now, that balance is tipping. These ecosystems survive on the edge, dependent on marine snow, slow metabolisms, and rare food sources. They evolved for scarcity, but not for disruption. And disruption is coming. Deep sea mining is starting to scrape the ocean floor, churning up sediment destroying habitats that took thousands of years to form. Plastic pollution drifts down in clouds. Microplastics have been found in deep sea creatures, in trenches once thought untouched. Climate change is warming oceans, changing chemistry, lowering oxygen levels. Even slight shifts can devastate life forms built for cold, high pressure stability. And then there's overfishing, not of deep sea giants directly, but of surface species that feed the marine snow. Take away the snow, and you starve the deep. The scary part? We barely understand this world, and yet we're already changing it, permanently. The deep sea isn't just alien, it's fragile. Every trench, every species, a chapter in Earth's story we're only starting to read. To lose it would be to lose wonder, to lose mystery, to lose knowledge we haven't even discovered yet. It's not just about saving weird fish, it's about protecting one of Earth's last untouched frontiers, because once it's gone, we don't get it back. We often look to the stars, dreaming of Mars, distant galaxies, alien life. But the truth is, we already live beside an alien world, one we barely understand, one that begins just a few miles beneath the surface. The deep sea is Earth's final frontier, 
a realm of monsters, marvels, and mysteries. Where creatures glow in the dark, where giants move in silence, where evolution writes stories stranger than science fiction. And yet, most of us will never see it, never hear it, never know its full beauty or its fragility. The deep sea challenges how we think about life, about what's possible. It shows us that survival isn't always about strength, but about adaptation, patience, stillness. It's a world where creatures live for centuries, move without eyes, and thrive on the tiniest scraps of energy. And maybe that's why it captivates us, because it's everything our world isn't. Slow where we rush, quiet where we shout, ancient where we're impatient. But make no mistake, our worlds are connected. The health of the ocean shapes the climate. Its rhythms affect the air we breathe, the food we eat, the balance of life above. To protect the deep is to protect ourselves. So let's not wait until it's gone. Let's stay curious, stay in awe. And remember, some of the most incredible life in the universe is right here beneath our feet. If this journey stirred something in you, drop a comment, still in awe, and share this video with someone who needs a reminder that Earth is still full of wonder.